Hey guys, how's it going? It's Sofa Lockpicker here, and welcome back to my Lockpicking Homeschool series. In today's video, I'm going to be going over a question a lot of beginners have, and that is, what is the purpose of the springs inside the pin and tumbler lock, and how do they help? So, in order to do that, I'm going to first go over how a lock works in general. So we're going to take a look in each slot here. You're going to see that there's going to be a spring followed by a driver pin, and below it there's going to be a key pin. So this driver pin is going to sit recessed in this plug, which you can see here. And the importance of that is when the driver pin sits recessed, it's going to make it so that you cannot turn the lock over because it's going to be physically obstructing the lock. So that is how you have your lock in the lock state, and that is how it protects all of your belongings. So when you go to open up the lock, what you're going to need to do is have a proper key. So the cut on the key plus the height of the key pin are all going to equal the same height. When you insert your key, the key pins are all going to lift these driver pins up and out of the way. So the driver pins are going to sit flush going across and then you're going to be able to get your lock opened up. And if you take a quick look here, you can see going across the key pins all sitting at the shear line. So in order to ensure a smooth operating lock, you're going to need to have springs because the springs are going to push these driver pins down and it's going to reset the lock every time you remove your key. Now you might be thinking, well, if the lock is sitting up like this, why does it matter? Well, you need to always have a good spring because you do not want to have your lock not reset. If you start to incorporate things like master wafers, you're just using the lock a whole time it gets any amount of debris in it, you do not want to have a lock that's going to get choked up and have a spring not pushing everything back down because then you're going to have driver pins sitting halfway, key pins getting stuck, and you're just going to have a lock that's not going to operate very well and that's not a very conducive thing to do when you need to rely on a lock. And the other thing is when you put the lock in the pins down position, which you see very frequently in European locks, it's going to make it so that all of the pens are going to drop down and it's going to make it impossible for the key to work. And when you have a lock oriented in this direction, it is very important to make sure you have adequately working springs because when they start to wear out, your lock is going to be more likely to not work very smoothly. Now to do a really great dramatization of this, what I have for you is a cutaway lock where I have removed all of the springs entirely. So I do want to show you how this does work when you have the lock oriented in the pins up position, but it does not work as well. So you can see that I can open up the lock both ways, but it does catch a little bit, and it doesn't always reset perfectly. Now, when I go to rotate this lock over 180 degrees, I just want you to bear in mind that if we did have all shot springs in here, they would be occupying a little bit of space. Because when I flip this lock over 180, since I do not have any springs in there at all, a lot of these key pins are now sitting below the plug. So you'd be able to just open up the lock without anything. Luckily, this key pin here is long enough so it's going to obstruct the plug. But regardless of that, the problem is going to be nothing is going to be pushing these driver pins up. Without all of these key pins sitting in the plug and the driver pin sitting way down here, it's going to make it so that we're not going to actually be able to have the key operate this lock and this lock is going to be completely not working. This is something that I've run into several times when I've worked on locks that are oriented in the pins down position. If you have springs that are shot and just not working very well, it's going to be very, very important for you to fix that because you do not want to have an instance where your lock is just not going to work anymore. But either way, guys, this is all that I have for you today. This is just a quick showing of the importance of having adequate springs inside of your lock. Springs can make a really big difference, whether you're master keying, making a challenged lock, and you always want to try to use the right spring for the right lock. They are an important part of the smoothness and correct operation of your lock. I just wanted to show this to you because it would be something interesting and I hope that it is helpful to someone out there. If you guys have any questions or suggestions, as always, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. 
If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like it, please subscribe. As always, thank you so much for checking out this video and I hope you all have a great day and I can't wait to see you in the next video.